My name is Michi and today I built the red and green light game from the Squid Game show which is currently on Netflix. I plan on actually building the entire show of it but I think there's uh, some games which are not possible to do in creative. Um, but let's see how this turns out. First of all I'm going to show you what you can do with it and uh, how you can play it and then I'll also show you how to build it so the people that actually want to try to rebuild it or try to get some uh, mechanics from this can also see how it's done. So with that being said, let's jump right. And here we are. This is the uh, raw core of the game, uh, how it looks in its edit form. And if you play it, obviously all the devices disappear. Um, but quickly, if, if you don't know, the game is very simple to play. Uh, all you have to do is basically a bunch of people are running towards a person, which is the red line, green line, you can say. And uh, if that person says red line, green line and turns around, all the people that are not standing still are disqualified. And um, well, let's say in the squid game, this has a... Uh, better taste because if you get disqualified you kind of get shot uh, so yeah that is obviously not uh, that helpful so you definitely want to stand still and uh, let me quickly show you guys uh, how you can play this so okay let me quickly explain you how this works in Fortnite creative so same thing we're gonna spawn all the way over there and then we have to run all the way through and past our red light green light person in our case it's not a creepy like kind of puppet uh, but it is creepy tomato head and he's gonna turn around at some point and uh, detect people which are not uh, or basically which are standing and in our case in Fortnite credit you cannot really detect someone that is just standing still there are some ways now you can do this but this was like super like advanced and I really want to make this a tutorial as well so um, so we're gonna have something different and in our case we have to hide from the person which is technically the same thing uh, the person cannot detect anything that is standing so technically if you're behind cover you're standing so um, what you have to do is obviously as soon as the person turns around you have to stand behind the cover and then nothing can detect you wonder how you can actually detect from tomato head and that is what we use perception triggers for um, so as soon as tomato head turns around you're gonna see that all the perception triggers will turn on and try to detect people which are not behind cover from here on it is super simple all you have to do then is pass all the way through and then go all the way into the end zone over here um, where you're finally uh, gonna win the game you also have a timer of two minutes which you can see at top of here and um, if that runs out all the people are dead as well and how the people die um, that is a good question and uh, obviously in the movie uh, they got shot by some some weird snipers in the in the thing we don't have weird snipers which can shoot by themselves and um, we have the sentries well, I would admit that sentries are really, really bad at shooting. And um, yeah, I had to put a bunch of sentries here to actually make sure that everybody dies that gets detected. So um, yeah, we have a bunch of sentries that shoot you if you get detected um, by all of these uh, perception triggers. And that is basically all you have to do. It is a super simple game. I made sure it's a little bit harder because obviously just standing is super boring and uh, a little bit unactionful. So I made sure that it's not super easy and uh, I tried to make it harder so not everybody can super easily run through the end and win this. And here you can see this is how it looks in action. There's the timer we have to run. You see Tomato Red is not looking currently and um, I probably, yeah, I, I could reach it in time. And you can see he turns around. Now it says Tomato Red is looking and we're gonna wait until he's looking away and now we can run again. And this is basically the same way how the red light green light game works. So Tomato is looking again, we have to wait and um, for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna stand in the middle of the area so you can see how what happens. You can see it turns around, we get detected and the sentries start shooting. You can see that I'm standing still and they're not really hitting me and there's like, let's say like 20 sentries. Um, so yeah, they're all on dead shot. I don't know why they're so bad at shooting. Um, but in the end, they're gonna kill you no matter what. And only the person that can actually run through can actually survive. And I think it's super fun and easy to build. And uh, yeah. Okay, and for those of you who are just here for the mechanics and uh, want to know how to build this, um, this is actually very simple to build. It took a little bit of trial and error to figure out which is the best way to do this and the most uh, way that is closest to the original one. Um, but I think for, uh, like doing this kind of where you have to hide behind something is the closest thing. There are the different versions where you only should crouch or had, where you had to emote. Um, but I think this one is the closest one. So as I already said, the perception triggers are going to detect people. The perception triggers are um, used with the when device sees a player transmit on. So as soon as someone uh, gets detected by them, they transmit on channel 20. And channel 20 is uh, set to give um, players into team 2. Team 2 is then going to uh, be the um, targeted team for the sentries. 
And uh, so you can see here, if I go into the sentries, you can see team one is the friendly team and team two is the team that they're gonna shoot. So everybody starts in team one and they're just gonna run. If they get detected, they jump into team two and the sentries start shooting. And then obviously I just have one to the back to the arena and one to the front, and then they get activated via different triggers. And uh, I, all of this happens in a music sequencer. So we have like kind of like a waiting time. And then there's a bunch of other triggers like the, this one for like the, uh, for the text and stuff like that. You also have like three different types of how fast he's turning. Um, so to make this a little bit more randomized and uh, not as predictable. Um, so you have like three different speeds where the tomato is turning. Uh, other than that, there's nothing really much to it. It is a super simple game to set up. Uh, it doesn't take too much time, I would say like a day or so. Uh, so yeah, as you saw, this is super easy to build, uh, not a hot at all and super fun to play, especially with a lot of people. It is also quite challenging to play it alone and uh, yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed this, hopefully you uh, could learn something from this and uh, have fun, enjoy the squid game and I will see you guys back in the next one, bye.